So let's as assess what we've got here. I'm going to close a bunch of these things. I don't need monitor anymore at the moment, so if you still got monitor running, just close it, free up some resources. Um, what I've got then on my on my flash drive, my F drive, I've got a folder called apps and I've got this project called template. So everything that I've been working on so far, which is not visually that much, but conceptually there's a lot going on here. This is the project. On my virtual device, I've got the project running and if I click the home button and then go to my apps, my apps is the little icon down at the bottom, if I go look at my apps, this is alphabetical. My project is called template. So if I scroll over, I'll see template. So my project exists as an installed app. You can see that also on your real device. So if you go to your real device and you go to your apps, and you look for template, you'll see, you should see template on the device. I never chose an icon, so it has the generic Cordova mascot. And if you notice, it's pretty subtle, but when you open the project, the mascot also appears momentarily, and then eventually it should say Cordova ready. There's also a splash screen, which we never added, which we'll edit later. But if you, if you know about Android, you should hopefully know that if you tap and hold your app, you get the app info feature. So if you tap and hold in the virtual device, you can place it on your home screen, but you can put it in the app info. Let's try this. Um, you should be you should be looking at your apps right here in the in the app screen. So if this were a real device, you tap and hold on the mouse, tap, click and hold with the mouse, and then drag it. Don't let it go. Drag it up to app info, and then when you've got it on app info, then let it go. You can do that also on your real device. And what that does is it loads up this app info that your device then knows about your app. Look at that, there's our version number right there. And it's showing that our project is 3.23 megabytes in total, 3 megabytes of approximately the app itself and a few other little bits of data permissions, look at that, all the permissions. It can read the phone status, it can record audio, it can check GPS, it can find accounts, it can control vibrations, so it can do everything that your device has capable. Eventually our app will not need to have all of those permissions because why would my selfie app need to record audio? People are gonna think that my app is spying on them. So we added all the plugins. As we further refine our project, we're going to remove the plugins we don't need. Right now we've activated all the plugins on our template project. And uh, as our project uh, stores data, like in a database, we can clear it. And then, of course, well, here's the overscroll. Do you see that bulge happening right there? That's the overscroll. So by doing disallow overscroll, that will not appear in your device, in your, in your, in your app. But anyway, um, then it, let's say our app is is crashing and it doesn't want to react. Well, we've got force stop right there, and we can also have install. So those of you that needed to do the extra steps of using ADB, you're going to need to uninstall your app and then reinstall it via ADB. Most of us seem to be able to simply do Cordova run Android and it works. But if yours didn't, I've got that instruction, 4B. So anyway, okay, that's information, that's nice. The project is 3 megs on the device. But for your information, if I back up into my Windows folder here and check the size of my project in Windows, it's 32 megabytes. So it, this is because it has all of the possible code for browser and Android and all that other extra stuff. And when we do Cordova build or Cordova run or Cordova emulate, it compresses it all down. Some of that gibberish that scrolls by here, it's uh, compressing it and, and, and zipping up the files and getting it ready and more efficient. And that's why on the device, the project is only about 3 megabytes, but on your disk, it's going to be probably around 32 megabytes, even though I haven't really done anything with my project. I haven't added anything from last month. It's going to get a little larger still, but uh, 
That's just for your information. So what we want to do, my latest instructions here, number seven, how to import the HTML5 web app project you previously created. We have this great project from last month. Now we want to get it into this one. Um, I guess I didn't make it as obvious as I should have here. I, again, I don't know if I'm having a senior moment a little early because I don't, I thought I fixed this, but here's what's missing here. This says, open your MySDCE Cordova project folder. We don't have that yet, so I'm missing a line here. What this is supposed to mean is, if you look on your apps folder in Windows, you've got template. I'm supposed to have a line here that says, make a copy of this folder and call it MySDCE. So this template, if I want to make any new apps, all I need to do is use this template to make a copy of that template, and I've got a new app. So one trick that you can do is right-click, copy, right-click, paste. That's going to copy everything there. It's going to take a little moment because it's a bunch of files, 2,900 files. And then all we need to do really is change the name of that project folder and we've got a new project. That's what I'm missing in my instruction. We needed to create a brand new project based on this template. I don't need to do Cordova create my SDCE and then Cordova add platform and then Cordova add plugins and then, con and then work on the config file. That was the whole point of creating this template file. It's got all the plugins. It's got the, a good config file. It's got everything ready. That's why we just make a copy of the template, and we've got a new app. So let's wait for that to happen. We'll do it later, but technically, what we would also need to do is edit the config file, because that config file of this copy still says template inside of there, doesn't it? Later we'll fix that, once we're ready to publish the app and such. But at this point, let's just make this copy, and then we can follow along here. In short, eventually when this is done, in short what this is saying is, we've got this built-in index file, <coughs> and it has some code that we need. So we're going to rename the index file index2. And it has a built-in CSS folder, image folder, JavaScript folder, which we can keep them, but we, they may conflict, so I'm going to delete them. And then we're going to start to import our project from last month into our current project, Cordova Run, and there's our project from last month. 15 seconds. Okay, so I've got a copy, template copy, I'm going to rename that MySDCE. This whole project is the, again, the unofficial SDCE Android app. And so I've renamed that copy of the template MySDCE. That's my new project. Did everyone uh, get that copy and rename the folder? Let's open the MySDCE folder here. And let's edit the config file. Right click, conf right click, edit with notepad. And so at the top it shows I'm in the MySDCE folder, and I'm editing the config, because you have still the config open from the template. Be careful. I've got the config open from the MySDCE folder up there. So what I need to change here, number two, it's no longer com Jones template, it's MySDCE. Now it's a brand new app. 
version number, fine. Android version code, fine. Name, my SDCE. That's the name that's going to appear below your icon. This name appears below your icon when it's installed. My SDCE. We're going to use some cool uppercase and lowercase uh, technique. Description. The unofficial SDCE app. And then the rest is fine. There's my author information. Down here are the different preferences. Portrait orientation, over scroll, Android version, all that stuff. That's the point of creating, spending all that time creating the template. So that now we just make a copy of the folder, change two lines, brand new app. Maybe not literally two lines. Let's see. Line two, line three, line five. Three lines. We need to change the package ID right here because there will be a there will be a conflict. If we didn't change that, we're gonna try to install an app called com.jones.template. But there already exists an app called com.jones.template. So if we change that to com.jones.mysdce, that's a brand new app, it will install it no problem. I'm going to save the config file. Actually, I'm, I'm going to close all my files in Notepad. Uh, I don't want to get confused with what I'm working with. So once you've, once you've changed your config file, close it. Uh, just close everything in Notepad. Leave Notepad open, but just close your files. Make sure you've saved. My instructions. Number three. Uh, in the WW folder, remember we saw last time that the website exists in the WW folder. So right here in your window, open WWW, and you've got index. That's the one that simply says Cordova ready. Let's change that just to index 2. It has some code that we're going to need. And we could use these files here if we were starting completely from scratch, these folders. But I'm just going to delete them. This CSS file just has styling of this basic project. And this image folder is the one with the little icon and the JS. is some built-in code. We don't need it. We've got our own code that we've worked with from last month. So here I'm just deleting the three folders. And I've renamed the index to be index2. In the WW folder, in the My SDCE folder. Delete the three folders. Mm -hmm. And you're renaming index to index two? Yes. <coughs> okay, so number five. From your mobile website folder from the last day of class last month copy every file into this WW folder. So if you have your project from last month, we can use it. But if we go to the network folder, I've got a copy of it that's ready to go. I recommend you use that one. If you go back to the network folder, back to our Campus Android 2, I've got my SDCE 2015-1006 start. That was the last version of our project on the last day of class last month. Inside of that folder is everything that we ended up with last month. So in short, I want to copy all of that into the WW folder of my SDCE project on my flash drive because that's got an index file. That's why I needed to rename that to index2, or else it would have erased it and I would lose some code. And that's got the jQuery that we worked with, and the Kodika file. No. 
no, it is under Android 2. It's the only folder there. Let me drag all of that over. Actually, you don't need those PDFs. I don't know why I have a couple of PDFs in there. Really, I don't know what, what my mind is this semester. But uh, drag everything there. You don't need those PDFs, obviously. But uh, you drag them, that's okay. So copy that, all of the files in there. Don't don't copy the folder into that project. That doesn't make sense. You need to copy the files in the folder into the WW folder of your brand new Android project. It's about 760 kilobytes. Just about a quarter or three quarters of a megabyte. <coughs> So just to take stock here, I'm in my my SWCE folder, WW folder, and I've just copied all of the work from last month into it. Technically, I could do then Cordova run Android, and my project would load up. There would still be things I need to iron out, but at this point, I could load it up and it's almost ready to go. But further on my instructions here, we'll do a couple more things and then we'll... Well, actually, because we're running out of the time of the day, let's, let's say that next time we'll, we'll pick up with line 6, but I do want to see this. I've been teasing it that we're going to get our project now. Let's actually see it. So we'll, we'll pick it up from line 6 next time, but we can see something now. If you go back to the command prompt, before we go further, we're in the template project. Remember, we're, if, when we're looking at windows, we've got a window that's one thing here and a window that's one thing there, and we see it in the totality. But we're in the command prompt, it only sees literally where you're at here. I want to run my brand new my SDCE project. So I'm in the wrong folder. I need to exit this folder. I need to go back from template up to apps. How do I go back a folder? cd dot dot cd space dot dot so I, I was inside of the template folder cd dot dot and now I'm back on apps dir and I see template and I see my sdc so I have to be in the folder of the particular project that I run that I want to run Cordova apps upon so now I need to go into the my sdce folder, so cd space my sdce. Notice I spelled it like this because the shortest way possible. I didn't, I didn't keep it called template space dash space copy because I'd have to type that in quotes. cd my sdce. And now Cordova run Android. And this will work. I didn't have to do build. I didn't have to do create project, I didn't have to do add platform because that all comes with that folder. It's built into the folder. It's built into that template that we created. Now we just need to run it from this point. So it sees my device there and it's going to process it. Again, it's not going to look perfect yet, but it should load up your, your app in your virtual or real device. And if you don't have your real device, Cordova emulate Android. There you go. Show that, show that, show the class there. See? She's got it running. I'll show mine also in just a moment. Tap on the different screens and see how it behaves. It should be pretty good. Oh, the pictures thing, that's a problem. Yes, the pictures might not fully work. That's why we've got more instructions to work with, but we'll start with a clean slate next time. I just want to get it up to this point.
So this might take a little longer because there's a bunch of new files in place, and that's why this is taking a little longer for me. So eventually it'll come up. <coughs> Question. Let me show you right here. The WW folder, uh, I only have an images folder. I took up... I, I had said earlier, we're going to delete all of those, okay. and it's in the handout also. I only needed the images folder. Okay. I don't think there will be a problem if we leave them there, but I want to head off problems, so I deleted them because that's from the old template file. The old template project. Yes. Yes. Question about the emulate one. Uh -huh. Does that refresh automatically? You don't touch it, right? After you emulate Android, you just wait patiently until it Yes, comes up? exactly. It might take a moment, but then it should eventually come up. Okay, here we go. Now I can show mine. There we go. There's my app from last month. I try to go landscape, and it doesn't go landscape because it took the preference. I do overscroll. There's no overscroll. And I can go from screen to screen. It's not fully, fully functional, especially if I click on catalog. Something weird happens. But that's something that we still need to address when we deal with, the, uh, when we deal with these other issues. Question. Okay, we're going to do lab time in just a moment. Um, even the map works pretty well. Customize. Let's see, does customize work? Put my initials. Yes. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Okay, on the Android device, if you if you clicked home, you're going to need to click on the apps icon down at the bottom, and then all of your apps will be listed there. So just find your app and then launch it again. All right, everyone, we're about to wrap up in just a moment. So here it is just to show you. I'm running it on my real device. There's the, there's the uh, status bar and such, such of my real device. So it's doable. It took us a long time to get to this point. The concept of it is that we've got our project now as an official app. In theory, ladies, I'm talking now. In theory, we could also do something like Cordova run iOS if we had fully set ourselves up for iOS. If we had done Cordova platform add iOS. That requires we had the iOS SDK. Right? We've got Android Studio, so this works with Android. If we set up the uh, iOS SDK, if we set up the Firefox SDK, if we set up all those extra SDKs, Blackberry, Windows, etc., we could do Cordova run Blackberry. And if we had a real BlackBerry, we, we would, it would run it. That's the promise of using Cordova. We're using these technologies, HTML. And then we're using Cordova, this main app, to wrap all of that HTML code into the appropriate, or convert it into the appropriate language per platform. And then we're taking our project from last month. We're taking our project from last month, and we're dumping it in here, but we have more to do, which we'll do next time. We need to add these extra Cordova-specific things for it to fully work, because um, it still thinks it's a website instead of an app. So we'll do that next time, and it's all here. Instruction number six. You can start looking at it, but when we come back next time, we'll start with number six. So that's why it was pretty important to set ourselves up uh, with our app folder on our flash drive, because now our project is on our flash drive, and we're going to take it home with us and, and work with it when we come back next time. So general questions for today? <clears throat>
to individual help in a moment, but any general questions? There may be still a lot to wrap your mind out around. That's why we've got a whole month to do it. But once we've got this basic foundation set up, you're going to see that it really fits together really well. So we'll end the main lecture at this point. We'll do lab time until 9.30. I'll turn the printer back on. I'll upload the videos, of course, and we'll keep going.